Uh, Dara, thanks so much for your time. I mean, Thank we were you. discussing now just how MFS is the uh, best kept secret, yet you're so large. But I mean, tell us exactly, exactly what it is that you do. Thank you very much. Um, we essentially help, help uh, African consumers, uh, mostly digital users, so someone connected to a mobile wallet, a mobile network, to send and receive money using their phone. So like an M-Pesa? M-Pesa is one of our biggest clients, indeed. So we are a B2B business. We enable those companies, such as M-Pesa, uh, banks, money transfer companies, to allow their customer to send money cross-border using their phone. Mm -hmm. So to bring it down, uh, you know, back home here in South Africa, I'm sure you're familiar with the e-wallet. Yeah, you know, for you sure. We've just heard from FNB launching e-wallet extra. Perfect. So typically you will put a phone number and then you will send money to someone mm -hmm. who will be able to then go and get it at an ATM here in South Africa. What we do is essentially make it possible that if you put a Zimbabwe number, it will still work. If you put a DRC number, it will still work. Mozambique number, Rwanda's one number, and so on. And if you are doing this from Uganda, if you put a Kenyan number, it will work. You say this is not the case currently with local service providers? Not in South Africa. So South Africa uh, is, uh, we, we don't service South Africa uh, partners at the moment, but that is changing rapidly and is coming. But everywhere else in, in the, on the continent, we are connected in, a, in over 30 countries uh, through different mobile networks. We have partnership with the largest, the like of MTA, Orange, Airtel, Tigo, Econet, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But I, I, is, is the, the reason why you are not uh, here in South Africa the same reason why other uh, digital uh, payment uh, services have not really taken off? Because we don't really have a, a large unbanked population like the rest of the continent. Actually, not so much. We, we found that obviously our, our focus and we, we, we finding that a lot of people using our services were previously unbanked and mobile money has helped them coming into the formal financial service. But the number one thing that people value about our service is actually the comfort of usage and the fact that it's on mobile. So we also, we just most recently, we, we signed an agreement with EcoBank, the largest bank uh, by footprint across Africa. So we have a lot of EcoBank customers who are also using our services. The reason we haven't been so present in South Africa has to do first that we felt the need is not so big, that you know there are quite a number of ways to send money around in South Africa as opposed to if you are in Guinea-Bissau or if you are in Madagascar, for instance. Uh, but also because, uh, you know, there are some particularities to South Africa regulation around exchange control and how you move money in and out of South Africa. But we are actively engaging with uh, South African players, including the Reserve Bank, to change that in the, in the coming months. Okay, perfect. So, Dara, you've uh, gotten into bed with the uh, Chinese, um, <laughs> a very expensive transaction there. Tell us what that is about and how uh, that will improve your company going forward, if that. So, uh, I mean, we, we, although we, our roots are Africans and we have kept the Africa in the name, I saw you call us MFS usually, we like to be called MFS Africa because we, we proudly about Africa, but our perspective has always been global. Mm. And from the get-go, we have always had a uh, global investor base from angel level and so on. And uh, in the course of, uh, of uh, raising additional capital, we, we uh, engage with novel players outside of Africa, sharing our story because connecting the African users to each other, mobile money users to each other, to be able to send money is only the first step for us. What we're really after is to create this one network that will eventually connect African users and consumers to the rest of the world. So yes, we have 170 million people today who are sending money to each other and can be seen as remittance customers, but it's also 170 million consumers mm. who buy every day on Amazon, a cool buy on Amazon if they want to, on Alibaba, on iTunes, and so on and so forth. What are the potential headwinds to that dream? Say it again? The potential headwinds to that dream, to that goal. Well, we, we far along the way, if you think about it, like today, effectively, what the MFS hub is, is the one connection that make it possible for someone who want to collect money or send money to an African consumer, whether this person is in Liberia, Guinea-Bissau, Benin, Rwanda, Zimbabwe, to do that through MFS. So we have effectively created what could be seen as the ACH at the level of Africa, one truly digital network that allow businesses outside of remittances to do business with African consumers. 
And that brings me to, you know, why, why China, why a Chinese partner? Because I think when we were telling our story, it resonated with Chinese investors who have seen similar pattern. You know, China is one country, but it's actually many countries in one. Mm. So they have experienced themselves that fragmentation of ecosystem coming together with the likes of Alipay and, and Tencent uh, in the recent years. And they have seen the possible path that we could take to get to something similar. So they were very interested in our story and we, we're glad to have them now as a partner. 